Hi, I would like us to take a brief solution to finding the limit of sine x over x. Actually, what are the limits gets to and how can we plot that on the graph? So let's see that. Finding the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0. So first we need to find the limit as it's approaching 0 from the left and as it's approaching 0 from the right. So let's just take our table. Uh, let's find the values and try to compare where they all get closer to. So taking sine x over x, values that of x that are less than 0, that's from the left, and values of x that are greater than 0, that's from the right. So the left hand side and the right hand side limits. Okay, so now let's take our three values of x which are less than zero. That's moving from the left hand side, but they are nearer to zero, but less than zero. And let's see what their limits will be. Okay, let's start from negative 0 0.5. We also take negative 0 0.4 and we take 0.001. Let's try to find out what the values will be here, and after that, we find other values also which are greater but nearer to them, and we find out their limits. Okay, let's see how we can punch sine x over x on the calculator and finding their values without working it manually by using the calculator. So, I'll be doing that for you to see here on the screen. So, we start by first taking the fractional value, since it's in a fraction form, something over something, you press the fraction key and you'll be given your fractions. At the upper part, we have sine x, so you press your sign, a bracket opens, then you take alpha and x. Since alpha and x have the same color, we use the alpha to call out the x. And after that, we use the same button that has to close the bracket. Then we come down to write our x, which is the denominator in that function. So we still call out the x using alpha x. And after writing down the function, we want it to calculate the values for us. So we press calc, which actually means calculate. So when you press the calc, it asks you what values do you want to compute. Since we are starting with negative 0 0.5, we write our negative 0 0.5 and press the equal to button. Then it solves it for us, giving us the value for negative 0 0.5 there. So we can see we have 0 0.958 something. So we just have to write it to a certain decimal place, which is 0 0.958. Let's pause it here. So using that same method, you can calculate for the values of 0 0.4 and 0 0.001. When we calculate for 0 0.4, we are going to get 0 0.9. 7, 3, and beyond. Also, calculating for 0 0.001 will be giving us 0 0.999 and so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's also take some values that are greater than 0 but nearer to 0. Let's take 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.001. What you note is that 
for this function is an even function. So when you put both negatives and their positives in it, you still get the same values. So computing this, you have 0 0.958. Computing this also, you get 0 0.973 and beyond. And computing this, you get your 0 0.999 and beyond. So what are we seeing here? We can note that the left hand side values are all approaching what? 1. 0 0.99999 is eventually equal to 1. And here to 0 0.99999 is also eventually equal to what? 1. So for this function, as we take the limit for x approaching 0, both from the left and from the right, we all approach 1. So we can say that the left hand side limit exists. The right hand side limit exists and they are equal. Since they are equal, we can say the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. So if you plot this on a graph, you are going to get something of this nature. We have a Cartesian plane, the y axis and the x axis. When you plot this using a GeoGebra or any plotting app or graph app, you find out that we have a zero here as a negative one, positive one, and so on. As we are moving towards zero from both the left and the right, the graph moves this way. There is a hole here, and it continues that way. In later lessons, you will learn why there is a hole here, and what that hole stands for. And this place is 3 when we draw that on the graph. So we know that they are always approaching 1. They are approaching 1, as we can see from the tables we have here. So I hope this is very helpful. It gives us the meaning and idea behind what limits, not just computing them but getting what they mean. I hope you'll be expecting other tutorials and we'll be glad to provide them. Don't forget to subscribe or like our pages for more videos and for more explanations. So we meet again. It's goodbye.